Paladin has been righteously fun, but it's time to wrap it up now. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, here to wrap everything up for the first edition Pathfinder Paladin by talking about the general strategy and tactics for the class and this particular build. But before we get into all of that, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit that subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or, if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down there, hit that like button, and share the video far and wide. But now, let's talk about what exactly we've done here with this class overall. So, to begin with, you are a melee and support class, first and foremost. You've got a great attack bonus, you're wielding um, martial weapons, and also simple weapons. There's some great simple weapons there, and you can wear a wide variety of armors and use shields. We don't get a lot of feats, but your spellcasting, aura abilities, with all the accompanying immunities to lots of status effects that you'll get, and lay on hands with smite evil for those important targets make you very effective at what you do. You're able to use, use all of these to create yourself as a bastion of support for your allies, giving them boosts to their own saving throws, um, being able to heal their wounds or your own wounds at a moment's notice, and Smite Evil will allow you to dish out a ton of damage against evil targets, so undead, evil dragons, evil outsiders, however, a lack of evil opponents will hurt unless your DM allows you to be a paladin of non-good deities to allow you to have a range of uh, other opponents to have, especially if he's not going into a campaign that is focused solely on fighting evil. That will help quite a lot with your options, or if they just go the 5th edition route and just make that a quite a bit more loose with how your smite options work. Certainly those are possible, but that's something that you have to talk with your DM about. Now, for this specific build, what we are assuming is, is that we are going to take Omen to make Intimidate a class skill, giving a plus one trait bonus and the ability to demoralize as a swift action. Just remember though that a lot of your ability, your spellcasting and abilities do compete for that swift action, so you're going to need to manage that particular resource well and try to judge what is going to be most useful in the moment. Now, if you're human, the extra first level feat will land you Fey Foundling for extra healing on all healing dice and Noble Scion to use your Charisma modifier instead of Dexterity for initiative. Along with the Dim Dweller uh, trait to replace some other options, this will give you a bonus to Intimidate and 60 feet of Dark Vision. That's massively useful and overcomes one of the big limitations that humans have is that in a lot of dark environments you're not going to be as effective as say dwarves or gnomes or elves, half elves and the like. If you go with being in a freed, that can uh, you will want to exchange your Burning Hand spell-like ability for the Wildfire Heart trait to get a plus four racial bonus to initiative, and the Noble Scion feat will uh, add in to, add into your uh, your charisma being used for your initiative. You're going to end up going fast very often. If you're not first, you're usually going to be in roughly about the top four of the initiative order. And if you roll poorly, you're going to be about middle of the pack. Very rarely should you be going last in most combat rounds. That's massively useful for somebody who has access to spellcasting and the array of abilities that you have. Just remember when over the equipment guide when I talked about the... Uh, um, the uh, uh, cir uh, the circlet that gives you a competence bonus to your charisma score. You DMs out there, whatever you decide whether or not uh, um, allowing Noble Scion to make initiative a charisma check rather than dex check, it probably shouldn't, but I can see the argument both ways. If you do allow that circlet to add in a competence bonus, I would specifically bar it from initiative and limit it to 
uh, skill checks and the like, those kinds of checks. That would just be my judgment call. Ultimately, your table, your rules, your, it's your judgment in that instance. But now for the actual feats that we select and everything, feats like Power Attack and Cornigan Smash will allow the Paladin to make free Intimidate checks, and Furious Focus will help to make sure that the first attack hits, allowing you to ignore the penalties Power Attack normally incurs. And since we're using Intimidate to such a high degree with Cornigan Smash, Signature Skill and Intimidating Prowess will add significant bonuses to Intimidate. By the time you hit level 15 with no other modifiers, just adding in your Strength, Charisma, the Trait Bonus, your uh, uh, and your Skill Ranks, and that Miscellaneous Modifier that kicks in for putting that first Skill Rank in uh, into a Class Skill, your Intimidate will be around a plus 22 that you're adding to your roll if you max out the skill at every level. And Signature Skill, don't forget, opens up a lot of extra abilities with uh, with the Intimidate skill. So that does a lot for you, especially if your DM approves that usage. And I'm, I would encourage you to do so just to add more utility and capabilities overall to this particular build and loadout. This is very fun and adds in so it's just some really cool features and of course this isn't the only way to build your paladin I and mean, this is just one way out of several certainly as was brought up um, the paladin can make for an incredible mounted combatant I mean I covered that a fair bit with the cavalier build guide but if you take a lance add in spirited charge with smite evil and the fact that you have a bonded animal companion that you can use as a mount that counts as combat trained is a celestial creature you're gonna just get a ton of damage out of it especially when you're using all of your different spells to buff yourself I mean to absolutely maximize everything Thing, you will be ungodly powerful, especially against evil targets if that's what you are limited and restricted to. Certainly, there's so many ways to go about playing with the Paladin, but this seemed like a great way to go about it. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? Hit those like or dislike buttons either way and let me know your thoughts down below so we can engage in discussion. And remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit that subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamers Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.